Hello friends, uh, Jeff here from Squadron. Welcome back in the online build of the Mosquito. Uh, today we're going to focus on closing the fuselage. As you could see in the previous chapters, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, in meticulously building and painting the cockpit. So now it's time to uh, close it all in and make it look like a real airplane. So come on closer uh, and uh, grab your tools and just uh, let's do it. Okay, first of all, we're gonna try to look for all the parts of the cockpit and put the cockpit, the, the all uh, different parts that we painted before. We're gonna make a, a cockpit assembly before we can put the whole contraption into the fuselage. So we have the main seat, the pilot seat painted up. We have the instrument panel all assembled. We have the main floor with the rudder pedal housing. We have the navigator or bombardier seat. We have the radio, the rear bulkhead. And that's part of the back of the airplane. And the control stick. Let's start with gluing these pieces together according to the instruction sheet. So all you have to do, because basically this is built main out of the box. There's, except for a few cables that we added, it is pretty straightforward and straight out of the box. So you can actually follow the guidelines on the instruction sheets. Let's start with assembling the whole thing until we have the complete copy together that we can finally glue into the fuselage. The good thing is with the plastic weld that it dries pretty quick and it doesn't eat into the plastic or it doesn't keep eating into the plastic. This is very good to work especially on painted pieces. I actually decided not to mount the guns because I don't want to show the guns. I skipped that step. I don't want to open up the gun bay anyways. I'm just gonna skip that step and glue the barrels of the gun straight into the nose cone. The glue I'm using is Squadron Plastic Weld. Plastic Weld has the advantage that it, it dries real quick, so it doesn't really eat into the paint. You know, when you painted something and you have to glue a piece on top or next to it, it doesn't really eat all that much into the paint so it doesn't crumble. Plus, it dries very fast too. That is indeed a lot, a lot better. Wow. I recently got the uh, my hands on the premium version of the Sprue Nipper, and I must admit it's uh, it's so much easier to manipulate and a lot sharper, and also you can reach because of the fine point. You can reach uh, into smaller areas and clip stuff out, so that's a very good tool. The good thing about the Mia kits is that there are not, whenever you uh, cut the pieces off the sprue, there is not a lot of flash you need to take care of. You just can easily 
nip them off the sprue, clean them up a little bit with the X-Acto knife and then just sand it a little bit. There's not much cleanup on those parts. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I am not going to expose the gun compartment, so I'm going to glue everything shut. So I don't really care too much what happens in that area. I just want to glue the cockpit in place and close the fuselage. The only disadvantage is building a, a big kit like the Mosquito in 30 second scale is that in the box there are like 25 close to or over 25 sp uh, plastic sprues with, part, with parts. It's very hard when you look at the instruction sheet and you basically have to lay everything out. For instance the cockpit, the whole assembly of the cockpit consists out of different parts from different sprues. In order to do that, in looking at the instruction sheet, you basically have to prepare at least the sprues that you need for the assembly because, as I mentioned before, the Mosquito consists out of 25 sprues and that's a, a whole lot to put on your table. So good advice is that when you go through the, or you study the instruction sheet first and then just prepare the sprues that you need during the, part, the, the section you're working on. For now, I'm just gonna glue in a couple things and then we can finally close it up. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. I'm sending the uh, tail wheel housing and bulkhead. It's a little tricky. Okay, let's glue that in place. All we need to do is glue a couple of brackets in place before we can close the fuselage all together. Let's make sure we get everything lined up. Again, there are a few points where the instruction sheet gives you the option of opening the bomb bay doors. And I also decided not to do that. I personally do not like opening hatches except if it's for the door here. I'm gonna leave that open. I'm gonna make sure that I do everything. The only thing I would like to leave open is the entrance door, the access door for the, the cockpit. I'll make sure that I prepare everything. So eventually I can leave that door open. Everything else I want to close. I, I personally don't like opening bomb bays or open hatches. I mean, especially for this purpose. I like to see like an airplane, especially a World War II airplane. I like to see the lines I don't want to I don't want to see it when it's basically the, the streamline of the fuselage or the wings or the whole entire airplane is broken by opening bomb doors or access doors to a gun compartment. When I look at the model, I would like to be able to see the Mosquito the way it was, you know, the, the complete streamline of the airplane. Again, I do not like to leave anything open unless it serves a purpose, like for a diorama or something. But for, for this, for, for just to, to build the Mosquito, uh, the only thing I would like to leave open is the cockpit so at least you can have an extra window to look at the detail of the cockpit. It's just a, as a static for static purposes. And it's true, I, I, I really don't like 
I mean, like a little hatch here and there, that's okay, and unless you put it on a diorama and it serves a purpose. But for just to put it for that uh, static display or to show the mosquito in its entirety, I don't like to open up a lot of hatches. Plus it's extra work, you know, you have to paint the inside and you hardly don't see anything. I just want to basically put it all together, paint it and weather the hell out of it. In later, maybe other subjects we're going to do in the future, I will concentrate more on super detail and leaving doors or access panels open. But for this, I just wanted to, for me, it serves as a platform for, for weathering. A nice painted cockpit in a well-weathered airplane, for me, that's the, the bomb. I, I, I really like a really well-weathered model, a finely executed cockpit. That those two factors are for me the most important. I'm trying to demonstrate that here. Again, as I just mentioned, we'll come back in later subjects, in other models, to spend more time explaining or painting or super detail all kind of panels or hatches or compartments. Before we're gonna close the cockpit, always dry fit it, test fit it, make sure you got everything within reach, especially some tape, your glue. But the most important thing is before you start applying glue, is to make sure that everything falls into place, that you never be surprised when, whenever you get everything lined up and you, you, you finally have to glue painted pieces in there, that for some reason you miss something and it doesn't fit. And then when you already apply the glue, it can end up in a big mess. It's better to, like they say, uh, measure twice, cut once. It's better to really test fit it and dry fit it a few times so you're absolutely sure of the fit before you start applying glue. Now, I already did that before we started. I already did it a few times, so I'm pretty sure that everything is into place. I'm gonna apply some glue. Again, be very careful in the application of the glue. Don't use too much. Be very careful just here and there on some strategic points, maybe, eh, to call it that way. Once you start working with glue, and closing the fuselage, you have to work the whole thing through. With a plastic weld, you have some, there is some working time, but not that much. And especially in big surfaces like this air, like the, uh, the Mosquito, it can be a little bit of a, of, a, of a hassle. So what I usually do, and most of you guys I'm sure will know that, it's not rocket, not rocket science, is to just to rip a couple of, uh, pieces of tape off so you, you don't have to worry about that once you start applying the glue. Now plastic weld is a great, a great medium to work with. The only thing is you really have to move forward. With plastic weld since it dries very fast you don't have a lot of time to apply a bead especially in big surfaces like the mosquito fu fuselage. So what I like to do is just to clamp the two halves together just gently let the plastic weld flow in between since it's so liquid it will find a way all along the edge or the seam actually. When you do it this way uh, you can basically let it flow along the seam and then apply the tape. Don't try to do the whole few slots at once just work in sections. And especially on this, the, in this case, you better start from the back and work your way all up to the front. So by the time you get to the front, you get you have some leeway to manipulate the front section of the cockpit and, and, and not to worry about the back. I just noticed that um, by gluing the fuselage together, I forgot uh, a rather important part. So luckily, I didn't apply glue. To, uh, Luckily, I didn't apply too much glue to it, so I'll be able to pull it apart, I hope. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Now when I pull it apart, 
since I didn't really glue the cockpit 100% in there, I just want to, I don't want to use too much glue. I have to reposition it real quick. Apply some fresh glue. Okay, so let's try this again. Yes, that looks a lot better. secure the front. Now later on, after we let the whole fuselage dry for about 24 hours, I'm gonna go and apply a small bead of super glue along the seam. That will serve both as a reinforcement, but also that it will serve as a filler that you can actually sand instead of adding putty you can really sand that very smoothly so it will be uniform with the fuselage and it's a very good way to eliminate seams instead of using putty. Okay, let's do the top, same thing. The good thing with plastic weld as I mentioned before, you can apply a series or at least a fair amount of it and it will not eat the surface of the plastic. It will basically weld the two edges but not on the top so there is not a lot of damage and I don't know if you can see it from here but the airplane itself the, the model itself lends itself to a to really a tight fitting so then adding the uh, plastic weld on there it all comes together and it gives you a really tight closing without using too much glue okay now a couple more beads in the front and we should be ready to go. And there you have it, finally closed. Now, as you might have noticed, there are a couple things I waited for uh, to paint. So uh, eventually, after I'm done sanding and all that, and before I do anything else, I'm going to highlight a few things in the cockpit, a, a couple knobs and a couple, I'm going to put a couple varnish drops in there. I need to update the, uh, the bulkhead here. I just left that out on purposely so it would give you a lot better view of uh, how everything comes together. Well guys, as you can see, it's all closed up. After an arduous process of uh, painting and building the cockpit, we finally came to, uh, it starts to look like an airplane, as a matter of fact. So. In the next chapter, when we come back in the next chapter, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the generic or general con uh, construction of the wings, the tail plane. Uh, also a couple of things that I want to point out, like uh, covering up the front uh, section. But uh, so far I'm, I'm pretty excited that we finally can start seeing some shape in here. So until next time, Jeff Fee here, signing off. Hello guys, uh, Jeff E here. Welcome back to the next chapter in the mo chapter. What is with the chapter? Well guys, as you can see, it's finally closed up uh, after a long and hard uh, 